maneuver around all the boxes and stuff in here that are the uh, dolls and things that I'm going to give away. Alright, so last Wednesday I had the fleeting memory that curvy Barbie waist and original Ken waist were about the same size. So I grabbed one of each and measured and they're both four and a quarter inches. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make a pants pattern that will work with both of them. It's wide enough at the top for the curvy hips and wide enough at the bottom for Ken feet, but still is overall somewhat slim fit. So I traced around my patterns and I came up with this and actually these still need work, but I used these and my first sample that I tried to make is this, which fits Ken. Like so. And Kirby. Like so. It's a little long and curvy, although when you put her in shoes and sometimes roll the pants up, the hems up, it works pretty well. So I called that a success and I went ahead and I cut out for the big trade I've been working on and the person who's coming in a few days. I um, went ahead and cut out three pairs of shorts and three pairs of pants. And I batch sewed them, which what batch sewing is, is you have a whole bunch of the same thing to sew and you do the same step on all of them before moving on the next step onto all of them. So I had sewn the center front seams on all of them and I applied the elastic for the waistband on the first of the shorts and it ended up like this and I thought, no, wait a minute, because I had done the sample pants with the elastic slightly exposed like that. I thought, no, wait a minute. There's a way to do this so the elastic is hidden. But without making a casing, you know, casing is you sew over and then you thread the elastic through. With this one, what you're doing, well, to get it this way is you put the elastic on the right side of the cloth lined up with the very top of the waist area and you stretch it while you zigzag over it and then you flip it to the inside and then you stretch it and zigzag over it again and it gets this. Well when you put it on the inside of the pants waistband along the top and stretch it and zigzag it and then you flip it to the inside and zigzag over it and you get a finish like this where the elastic is completely concealed and it looks like a casing but it's I think it's less hassle than I think casings are a hassle. Let me go pick up that pair of shorts I dropped although you probably got to look at them. And yes, boxes everywhere over here. So I did the waistband like that and this one, and for everything else I switched to putting it on the inside. And I'm probably eventually going to make a pattern to share of these, and I will probably make a video to go along with it, so I will show you how I do this waistband. I will also try to explain it in the instructions for this, because like I said, I, I think it looks a lot better than making a casing, but <laughs> I've actually forgotten about doing this kind of waistband for a while, so I've been making casings for a long time, so variable. So anyway, this pair. Like I said, this person likes all the colors all the time, so our shorts are these. And I actually made a pair of shorts for my kiddo about like this, out of this fabric. And then three pairs of pants is more of this and dots and some swoopy stripes. So I went through and I made all of these and I thought, well, you know, they're not quite sitting at the waistband. I don't know if it's the difference between making the elastic 
like this versus like this, but they weren't quite sitting at the waistband the way I wanted it to. So I looked at my pattern pieces and they're at kind of angles at the top, so I thought, all right, I'll just straighten that up and I will use this plaid homespun to help me straighten that up. And I did straighten up and it still dips a little bit in the front and the back, so I realized what I needed to do is come down farther in the crotch seam, but I haven't done that yet. I've sketched it out, haven't done it. I thought I would do it. I got all this done on Thursday and I thought, okay, great, I am sewing, I'm into it. I'm going to spend all day Friday sewing and Saturday and Sunday, and then I'm going to have so much sewing ready for this big trade for when the person comes. And then, um, okay, <laughs> a little bit of cat TMI here. Every summer around this time, the floof gets kind of blacky. I think it has to do with the accumulation of all the um, spring and summer shedding and grooming. So about quarter till four on Friday morning, I heard floof getting a little perky. And my husband is a super early riser and Friday is his day off. So by Friday morning at quarter till four, he's already downstairs in the basement doing stuff on the computer just so he doesn't disturb the rest of the family. So I, I get up and I turn on the lights and I clean up what needs to be cleaned up. And then I get back in bed and I'm laying there and I'm thinking, I'm just, you know, looking around, waiting for myself to fall back asleep and my eyebrow itches. So I reach up to scratch it, but I missed and I jam my finger at high speed into my eyeball and it hurt. And when I finally got out of bed later, I discovered I had scratched my eye. So I proceeded to spend like every time I tried it with my eye, the tears would just pour out. So I knew there was no chance it was going to get infected because the body was doing a good job with making saline solution on its own. So all day Friday, I kept my eye closed. I mean, I also had a horrible headache, so I took some um, diphenhydramine, which is generic Benadryl. And one side effect of that with me and with a lot of people is it just knocked me out. So I was asleep on the couch for a long time. And another side effect of that stuff is that I always used to joke I'd wake up and I couldn't feel my eyeballs. Well, it actually helped. It was nice to have numb eyeballs that day, but still, I kept my eye closed most of the day, sleep on the couch or just laying, sitting there with my eyes closed and talking to family. And on Saturday, my eyes still hurt, although not quite as bad. And like the morning was asleep on the couch again, and by the afternoon, as long as I kept my eye closed, it wasn't too bad watering was open, but I kept my eye closed and I decided, well, if I can't sew, I'm going to start organizing the dolls because like, you know, I've been saying that I'm going to organize them and give them to people and then maybe, maybe have a sale trade list or maybe just do a, I'm going to fill a flat rate box full of stuff and seal it and I'm going to have these flat rate boxes and I'm not going to know what's in them and first come first serve just you know 15 or 20 dollars for the, everything shipped and you can have a box of mystery. I haven't gotten that far ahead yet uh, with my plans yet because like I said I want to give stuff to the people coming here this weekend and the local people later this month we're trying to get, to get do a get together. So anyway I've organized. I was organizing the stuff and I have boxes of things down here to give away or trade or whatever. So I did that Saturday evening and then Sunday I woke up and my eye was so much better. Just amazingly better. But because I had started organizing this stuff, my room was a mess with all these things, all these boxes pulled out and on the floor and dolls everywhere. I went ahead and I finished organizing that stuff on Sunday and I think even a little bit into Monday. Yeah, Monday I got to the, you know, under this desk, under the, it's not a desk anymore, under this table is this yeah, <clears throat> foot locker, steamer trunk thing where I keep my doll clothes. And I had removed so many dolls from my storage boxes and taken off all what they had been wearing. I had this big stack of my clothes that I had to get put away. So I took out a lot of the clothes that I'd had that I wasn't using so much and put those in. So I got everything organized and ready to go. But no sewing, obviously. And I thought I would maybe sew on Monday and Tuesday, but I didn't because I'm doing all this stuff and getting ready and like cleaning out the refrigerator and things like that, preparing for people to come over. I don't know if you can see the, this box here. I don't know if it's in the image. It used to be full and overflowing with bodies. 
but I'd had a box down there that was like spare dolls. And a lot of those dolls that were in the box down there went to the sale trade pile. And other dolls that I'm not sure if I'm gonna like customize them more or what, they went into here on the big box, and the big box is now full of the parts, bodies, and project dolls that were in here. And that just that alone made me so much happier getting this so it's not an avalanche of dolls who slide out on the floor if you touch it wrong and having free large box that I can dig around in down there. So that was a little thing. Um, small side effects of going through all these dolls. I mean the dolls were there were dolls that's like I'm so glad I have this doll. This is doll is great. There's dolls that's this almost perfect. It just needs a reroot or a little bit of body work. There were some dolls that's like I like this head, I like this body. They're gonna need some engineering. <laughs> engineering, figuring out to get them put together. So those are in the project box. Uh, some dolls, it's like, I like the head, but not enough to actually use it in a body. So the head, some heads went to the head box, some bodies went in the body box, but there were a few dolls where heads got put onto different bodies. And um, that's what I'm gonna talk about now. <laughs> One of the first ones was last year. Joshi had some commissions open, so I sent him a Shawnee sculpt head. Technically it wasn't Shawnee, it was the Shawnee sculpt, but Mattel had made some Toys R Us exclusive dolls in the late 90s that they called Asha, who were wearing like purple kente cloth inspired clothes. And that's what this doll was, only when I found her in the thrift store, her body was all chewed up and she was missing big clumps of hair, so I knew that I wanted to customize her, but I wasn't sure what to do. And when Josh had his commissions, I was like, all right, I want Josh to paint this doll. So I sent the head off and she came back adorable and I rerouted her and she had been on this body, which is a gymnast style body that I had also thrifted, not at the same time, but at the same thrift store, which when I thrifted it, it was the whole neck connector and top of the neck was missing. Well, the Asha slash body the Shawnee head had been using, the top of her neck was actually mostly fine, even though the rest of her body was trashed. So I, I don't know if you can see, I cut the top of that neck off. I cut the um, Asha neck off and the Top, the mangled top of the gymnast Barbie neck off, and then I used acetone goop to meld them together. Which, if, if you don't know, if you've forgotten, acetone goop is when you put hard plastic in acetone, acetone will melt the hard plastic. And then you have a little while where you can actually mush the hard plastic stuff together, and then it will dry out and just be plastic. But you need really good ventilation when you do this. So I got that together and I sand it out fairly smooth. And I was happy to use this for that Asha head because 90s Christy skin tones don't really match a lot of modern skin tones perfectly. But she just didn't seem like the kind of doll who should have these big flat feet. Even though I did do the um, heat. Yeah, if you heat the hands carefully over a stove burner, you can quickly reshape them and then dunk them into ice water to set the hands into a slightly more graceful shape than the karate chop hands of the gymnast Barbies. So I was shuffling through the bodies and I took one head off of the Barbie style grace body and I had this one I thought well you know this head is a little darker than Barbie style grace but I want her on the the Barbie style body is the night the 2009 articulated fashionista's body without the underbust but with angles and it's like I just think this other body would suit her so much better than this one so I tried the head on the body and it's not a perfect match but I'm so happy with her on this body she can move so much more so much more expressive and she has so many shoe options with the modern small feet on angles so that's her body upgrade. So that made me happy. And then I'm shuffling around and sorting out other dolls. And then I get to my Get Real Girl Gabby. This is the second version that had the karate theme that Eric McNeil sent. Thanks again. 
Eric. And um, in 2001, when Get Real Girls came out, they were like eye-opening to me that, you know, I had seen some gymnast Barbie bodies, including some with the high heel feet and some with the ballerina feet. And like it was, it was nice, but I didn't really like the bodies. But when I got the, my first Get Real Girl from Toys R Us, it's like, wow, this is amazing. She moves so well. So I like got home and went online, and that's when I discovered the whole world of female action figures, and you know, Volks dolphies. And that was even before Obitsu was making its own figures. I was already thoroughly into the world of articulated female. Fashion dolls. Well, no, there really weren't articulated female fashion dolls. There were female action figures and Volks dolfies, and I was already into that world when Obitsu came out with its basic articulated body. So, the Grit Row Girls were amazing, and a lot of us at the time were buying them just for the bodies because the heads were super cartoony. Well, they had really nice gear too, but the heads were so cartoony, and it's just we just. My group of people at the time weren't into the whole cartoony look of the heads. But the more that we messed with the bodies and all the other bodies, it's like, it's nice, but there were some frustrating limitations. Like, she has great muscular arms and thighs, but her elbows just barely make 90 degrees. She has this great upper body articulation, but the perma permanent underwear, her wrists move, but that's a really weird place to put the wrist joint. And oh, by the way, all of their left hands have magnets. Feet, ankle joints, the same as the wrist joints. They're great, but they're in a weird place. The feet don't fit anything. Wonderful double hinged knees, but like Liv, there's no accompanying cut joint at the top, so they can't really do a lot with those double hinged knees. So, I was looking again at the Gabby I had, and it's like, you know, she is really a cute doll. I just don't like this body, so why don't I put her head on another body? I don't know why it had never occurred to me before to put a Get Real Girl head on another body, but I had freed up a tan 2009 Fashionista's Articulated Body. I put her head on, and I love her. She has this great cartoonish face. And I do feel a little bad that she's lost all this wonderful muscle tone that this body has. But she has so many more possibilities as far as clothes and shoes and just... Yes, the articulation on this body really isn't great. But you know, she can do this. This body cannot. So it's the little things. So that was one thing I was happy to get her onto. And the other doll I wanted to get the head onto a better body was um, last year, I think it was, when Phantasm Creation was just destashing so much hobby stuff. Mostly what I got was cloth, but there were some doll things too, including one was a Lady Paradise doll. Now, Paradise Publications makes crochet patterns. Specifically, crochet patterns to make like really elaborate period pieces for dolls. And they sell their own doll. Um, I think it used to be just a generic Barbie knockoff clone type doll. But then in the early 2000s, they moved to their Lady Paradise dolls, basically a Jax Pacific Girl Force doll. And if you're not familiar with the Girl Force dolls, they were like the super trendy early 2000s, like around around 2000 to make maybe 2003. Um, super trendy, very realistic bodies, like so realistic. It was unbelievable at the time. Horrifically bad articulation. I mean, this is the body. I'm gonna cover it. Oops, because this is like a really realistic body, even though there's no detail back there but super realistic body. Her um, arms can do this, her legs can do this, and really that's it. You see that's all the farther the legs can bend out. There's a little bit of movement at the waist, 
the head's about the same thing. It's like those um, posable, articulated skeleton things you put inside American Girl type dolls with all the, the um, ball and socket joints. That's what she has here. Because <laughs> I, I took at least one of these apart way back when, when they were more common. It's like about the only time you see dolls, the Girl Force dolls these days, is like they made Charlie's Angels dolls with very realistic Lucy Liu and Cameron Diaz and Drew Barrymore faces and also Josie and the Pussycats dolls. Uh, these bodies are very risky faces and great clothes but like these bodies are so hard to dress and you can't do anything with them. It's like, like I said, that's about as much posing as you can get out of them. So the um, Girl Force dolls, the Jack's Pacific specific characters there's Bianca and Kriana, and later a few others, but Bianca and Kriana were the two initial releases. Bianca, as Jack's Pacific released her, had red hair, and he's like, well, they both had really full lips and the little, like, button nose and big eyes. And when Paradise Publications used that to make their Lady Paradise dolls, they changed the hair and eye colors. So that is what. <laughs> A roundabout way for me to say it. So what I got from Phantasm Creations was a blonde seafoam green eye and pink instead of burgundy lipstick, Bianca. And the doll sat in her box. down at the bottom of my bookcase for a while. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with her because this is like super nostalgic for me. And so messing with all the dolls and I'm trying to find a body to put this head on. But the other thing is you can see how long that neck is. So the opening inside the Jack's Pacific Girl Force heads is really deep. So most of the time I put it on a regular Barbie style body and it was sitting way low. But I had a Integrity Toys Dynamite Girls body that Flo had given me a while ago, thanks, that had had a, an Olmec Imani head on it with the Olmec Imani had the old sphere style neck knob. So the, I'm trying to get all my brand names right, the Integrity Toys Dynamite Girls body had a big piece. I'd um, cut the neck part out of a glue head Barbie and put that on and that made enough bulk to hold the sphere head on. So I tried the Jack Pacific Girl Force Bianca head on this body and it fit perfectly over the extender. I'm recording my video. I'll be done soon. And anyway, here she is. I trimmed some of her hair, but not all of it I can see now, but I shouldn't worry about it. So it's a very early 2000s kind of face. And the body skin tone is much darker than the head skin tone, but they're like the same basic hue. It's just one is a tint and one is a shade or a tone or however that works. So I think it actually matches really well. It just looks like, you know, one part is in shadow more than the other. So I think she works. The hand, the body I got from Flo did not have hands, so I like rigged up some hands for the head that was on it before, but I'm not sure I'm going to keep these hands on her. I'm going to rig up some other hands. But like I said, I'm pretty happy with this combination, even though it was just on a lark to see if it would even physically work. And these are some of Cosmo Moore's bandages and the hair is annoying me. I'm not sure if she will keep the blonde hair because blonde hair is not generally my thing in dolls. I might curl it, I might eventually add her to the reroute pile. But uh, for now, I'm pretty happy. So, I ended up with several improved dolls from my efforts and this big pile of boxes. 
and I finally got to sew on my new table and I would be afraid that it would rock and move and bounce a lot, but it doesn't. I mean, when you grab the corner of the table and shake it, the whole thing wobbles. But when you're on the sewing machine and the sewing machine is going up and down, it works fine, so I'm happy with that. And said the people are coming. The first one is coming tomorrow, and then the next one will get here Friday. And I made peace with the fact that I'm not going to get everything sewn that I want to sew for this big trade, but I know the person I'm trading with is bringing cloth for me to sew anyway, so I wouldn't have had it all done anyway. So, in a way, poking myself in the eye, as stupid as it was, eventually led to me just getting a little more relaxed about all of this. So, so this weekend I'm going to be doll people things, and then... I will have more stuff to sew, and then I'll have John's birthday stuff I still want to sew. And then, of course, I still want to sew stuff for me, but after that, I should be able to take a step back and breathe and be able to do my projects a little more. I mean, I've still been kind of selfish and throwing in stuff for me every once in a while, too. I mean, really, I probably shouldn't have done taking the time to do these, because I like went out and took the pictures and did that kind of stuff, too. But, I'm planning another get-together with local doll people sometime in July, and um, my birthday is next week, so hopefully I'll calm down. Oh, and I, and I also wanted to mention that, you know, I woke up Sunday morning and my eye felt so much better, and also Floof had, um, how to phrase this delicately? Floof had dealt with her blockage, so she's also feeling much better and back to normal, and she hung out with me when I was like sorting things, and she randomly bit me, so I know she's feeling good. So that's a great, I'm better, Floof's better, I'm feeling better, I have house guests, people I've known online for a long time, one person I've known since 2001, and now we're finally meeting. So, so. I'm not sure what I'll have to show next week is probably going to be, you know, stuff, not made stuff, just acquired stuff. But, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, then I'm going to end on a bummer of a note. I was going to say, oh yeah, the Curvy Girls Kickstarter was scheduled to end this Sunday, but they canceled it. They realized they were not going to make their goal, so they're going to step back, regroup, and redo it with a smaller goal. They haven't exactly released what they want to do, but they really want to get these dolls made. And they they now have like some idea how many people really want to see them made. So they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna downsize and regroup and eventually read it Kirby Girl dolls. And people are finding Wild Hearts Crew dolls. I checked the Walmart, I didn't see them yet. And people are finding the OMG LOL dolls, which I'm still not sure what I think about those. So, there are dolls out there, and there are dolls coming, and there's always dolls. And hopefully I will have more doll projects, not in the near future, but before the end of the year, I'm sure I'll do more dolls. And, and I'm rambling now, aren't I, because I run out of stuff to talk about, and I am still so excited and nervous about this weekend. So, um, yeah, I'll see you next week. Happy holidays if you're in the U.S. So here is the table that I got. It's um, kind of hard to get a good view of it with the video camera. Because, you know, with the regular camera I would turn it up this way, but that's not very easy to uh, work with on a video camera. Yeah, and, um, yeah, this is the stuff that I have pulled out of my uh, stash that I will be giving away, hopefully in large part to the people coming this weekend and later this month who are local. And if there's stuff left over after that, I will be separating it out for certain people and then whatever's left I might just put in grab bags. But yeah, the table, it's in pretty rough shape. Someday I will refinish it, but I do like the uh, classic Formica cracked ice pattern desktop.